Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's Friday, February 17th, and I'm going to be removing some cuttings from the black Madeira and the Ishia black fig trees. Always pains me to do this, but uh, let me take some cuttings off. And particularly the Ishia black is such a slow growing tree. I think it's probably because it just gets root bound, and I really have not practiced root pruning, um, probably now is the time to do it before these trees wake up. It's pretty warm in the lean-to here. It would be interesting to see what type of spurt of growth you get for potted fig trees when you do the root pruning. So it's just a matter of choosing some branches. This is a long black Madeira branch that's sort of rubbing up against this here but another limiting thing is I like to keep it sort of uh, narrow in its size because I have to get it through the doorway and every time I bring these pull these through the doorway they rub up against the branches that make them just too wide so yeah so I'll be re removing some of these cuttings just go ahead and and do it like pulling a band-aid <laughs> so I think I'll cut this one off here that's black Madeira let me take this one off and I have the boxes the shoe box is already set up as I see a black one. The shoe box is set up with the dampened sphagnum moss in there. But I might give these a once over. I've been spraying them with neem oil. If I should give them the once over with the with the brush under some cold water. have to be trimmed anyways to fit in the box. So let me get to it and start removing whatever I want to remove and whatever I'm inspired to remove <laughs> and get back to you. So that's what I've taken. This is the black Madeira and this is the Ashia black. So here's that pine bark and I just mixed in some, some perlite here. I think I bought this perlite. Yeah I bought this on uh, Amazon. A pretty good grade, pretty good size. I know the stuff you get like at Home Depot. It's uh, not as coarse. It's really difficult to find this stuff. And usually on the on the bottom of the bag, a third of it is all uh, dust. So I've got some perlite, some pine bark, and then I brought this in. This says it's an organic garden soil. The bag uh, has changed. I was looking for it used to be a green bag, but you can see it's nice dark soil. And I don't want to put too much in. You'd be surprised how long this stays moist. I want a lot of nice uh, humid air pockets for the roots to grow into and mature without rotting. And that's the key, I think, is, is to have uh, those, these air pockets that are really humid. It's like mini mini miniature aquariums that I'm, I'm putting the uh, overall plant in with the top and the light. So that's almost like, really, that's that's all the soil you actually need. Because this, this pine bark uh, in the aquarium with the high humidity, everything is going to normalize to that humidity. So the pine bark is eventually going to soak in a lot of uh, humidity too. And maybe some more soil. I used to use the perlite 
and the um, vermiculite, and I, you just lose a lot of cuttings to to rot, and then you lose cuttings when you're transferring and you're breaking roots. This here, I just put the roots in here, and I think I'll even put the um, this here. I'll put the, the cuttings in here. And I think I'm, I'm actually going to put the cuttings that have started to leaf out, or the buds have opened. Because when the, the buds break in the shoe boxes, they tend to start to rot too, and they'll fall off. And then that's just all lost progress waiting for the roots to develop. And you can get the roots to develop straight into this uh, mix in the aquarium under high humidity conditions. So. You can see there, that's plenty. Plenty of soil in that nice light mix. I mean, a, a lot of this bark also is broken down, so it's almost, you know, a soil also. Or soil consistency. I wanted to point this out real quick. It's about 56 degrees in the cellar, and with this bucket um, on the concrete, it's probably a little bit cooler. There's hardly any evaporation going on. You know, we've all seen the uh, animations of what happens when you start boiling water, how the molecules start jumping around, and there's just not energy. You know, these molecules in the water here, this this bucket, this little bit, I don't know, a quarter inch of water, this will last till the spring. This isn't going anywhere. It's not evaporating. And that's what happens with these cups. Um, if you don't have enough air pockets in the, in them, uh, the, you know, the roots are essentially sitting in water. And they're going to they're gonna rot. So you have to be very careful in uh, cold environments when starting cuttings so the fig cuttings because uh, it's a really delicate balance between uh, keeping them moist and enough and also uh, not rotting them from too much moisture and the same thing goes for the citrus that's a big killer of citrus is the root rot so here are the cuttings I put in the shoe boxes on February 17th. The uh, black Madeira, the Ashia black, I actually cut on the 17th. But I had some others that I made the mistake of keeping in the refrigerator after I got rid of that particular variety. And uh, I'll be uh, trying to root them again. So here's the black Madeira. I know there's at least one in here that there was a root forming. I want to get that into a cup without breaking it. Put it on this side. Oh yeah, there's roots right there. This one, oh yeah, this couple of roots. Ooh, got some mold issues going on on the other end. But what I'm going to do is just give this a quick scrub with a toothbrush under running water. So I'm looking at this and I realize that the roots that have formed are on the wrong end. The uh, orientation of this cutting is like this. This is right side up. So there's no roots on this uh, other end that I could put below the soil line. So I'd have to really bury this cutting here according to the way these nodes look to me. So let me go get this into a cup anyways. i give it a try. I'm wondering if 
there was mold on this end here because it's no, it still looks green. Looks like it was maybe hit with a frost or something. I don't know. But you can see the roots. They're on the wrong end. Hmm. There's a node here. Well, I'll give it a try. Oh, it's not going to fit in the cup. Even if I buried it all, well, just about. If I put it in at an angle, maybe. Well, that's not ideal, but I want to give this a shot, see what happens. I'll just water that in. This is the aquarium I use. I'm just going to put this in here. I'm going to put a damp towel on the side here to increase the humidity in here. And I put the top on with the aquarium lights. So you can see here with the uh, cold today, the in-house humidity is only 20%. All the moisture is locked up. So I'll put this inside there. Let's see how that increases. So I just have these aquarium lights on here. Need to get another timer. Not that I need lights on at this point. So it's up to 35. Now that I have the top on, that humidity will go up. So it's Wednesday, March 15th, 2017, the day after the uh, storm. It's not as bad as they predicted, at least in my area. Although, I think some places were officially uh, categorized as having blizzard conditions. I think up in Lowell. There's already uh, some bare asphalt there. But let's get to putting up some more fig cuttings. Here's a nice sheer block. I moved some of them out of the shoe boxes into bags. I didn't have time to get more sphagnum moss. I thought they were too crowded. So there's a root. Oh, did I break it? I see the little root there. I made the mistake of I should have cut these off. I don't think they'll fit in the cup. And the bud's broken on the other end. It's opening up. I don't want that to rot off. Looks like this might be already broken. I think I'll cut these off. I'm going to try putting them in the cup. See if I can root these little branches here. Oh, looks like they broke off. Well, I'm going to put this in a cup anyways. 
Yeah, so I'm going to try something different this year. I'm not playing with uh, UC Davis cuttings that can't be replaced. So I'm taking a risk with these. I figured, well, if they're going to root under moist conditions in sphagnum moss, why not right directly into this media in the aquarium? And if they're photosynthesizing, that energy's got to go somewhere, so they already have that ability. I keep them in a dark shoebox. So we'll see what happens. So I just pour this in. I don't know if you can see those three smaller branches I cut off. I just put in, give it a try. Put them in the cups. Put them in a nice humid environment and see what happens. Here's another ice sheet of black. Let's see what's going on. If anything. Nothing really. But you can see the white nodules forming this here it's close to the budding end again another strange cutting little individual shoots on there individual stems Hmm. Yeah, so it's been since February 17th and still really not a lot of roots to speak of on the Ashia Black. Let's look at the let's look at the ones that are in moss, see if there's a different result. Okay. Oh did notice I'm starting to have a problem with these fruit flies all of a sudden there. They have found some nice places to breed, I think. So right there I've got bud opened up. No roots. That's rotted. I might cut have to cut that off. Hmm. Wow, a lot of a lot of flies have found their way into the boxes. I have to get some of that diatomaceous earth, I think it'll help. Here's a panache from UC Davis, originally from UC Davis. And you can see the 
white dots all over this. My problem is, this is going to be above the soil line, but I do have roots on the other end here. Very fragile. There is a bud right there opening up. So I get this into a cup. So I'll get this into the cup, get the label on. Get this centered. Not breaking the roots. Now this is McCool, and you can see that the bud has opened up, and you can see what I'm talking about. This piece here just, just broke off. So this is an opportunity to start photosynthesizing in my mind, even if it doesn't have roots yet. But, lucky me, it does have roots. So time to get this into a cup. So here's the McCool the label. Just need to water that in. I just might go ahead and put everything in the cups, whether they've got roots or not. See how that works out. Here's a black Madeira. You can see the leaves are like uh, when things sprout in your vegetable storage container in the fridge. It's, it would just fall off. So it has roots. Get these leaves under some light and they'll green up. And start photosynthesizing. But then you still have to connect the plumbing from this to the roots. Just because you've got the roots and the green doesn't mean they're connected, functioning together as one unit. So these are the cuttings I have so far, and uh, we'll take a look at the progress in about a month. I need to set up another bin because I still have some more cuttings I need to put into cups. So this is New England Gardening. Thanks for watching.